Phil Kessel signs with the Maple Leafs. Who has the best armchair GM on Cap Friendly? We're gonna find out the best, we're gonna find out the worst, and we're gonna find out which one is the funniest. Let's get into it. Also, make sure to stay tuned to the end where I talk about all the signings that the Leafs have made in the last few days. All right, there's a lot here. Still crying, sanding to the desert, wow price for Uyghur. There's a lot that I don't really know if I want to look at. First round rivalry, yikes. Thank you, come again. I'm going to look at thank you, come again first because this one should be good. So Pierre Engvall, 1.5, two years. Actually not bad. Um, Kasperi Kapanen, 2.1 for two years. That is that's an interesting one. Sandy in three years, two million. I really don't hate that. All right, so they're trading Jake Muzzin for Kapanen's RFA rights. Don't get that. They already they already have enough right wingers and they just acquired Callie Yarncroc. I don't think they need another right winger like Kasperi Kapanen. And I hold up. They just re-signed Pierre Engvall and now they're trading him for Luke Glendening. No, see, we're not, we're not doing that. That doesn't make sense. If you're going to re-sign Pierre Engvall, you're not trading him. There's no point. You could have let him go to market. There's no point in debating or negotiating a contract with them and then saying, hey, buddy, you're gone. That just doesn't make sense. That does not work. I don't know. Who, what do we got here? Alexander Kerfoot, Nick Robertson, SDA, Roni Hervone, and Toby Niamel and Justin Hole for Adam Larson and Carson Soucy. That is, that's not allowed here. The additional detail here is Kerfoot willing to extend. I don't really know if that would be the case. Maybe because he's from Vancouver, maybe he'd like to stay there. But again, Seattle's not really a team that's gonna be qualifying for the Stanley Cup anytime soon. I don't see that. And even before that, like an additional, uh, what? You're already giving up Nick Robertson, Roni Hervonen, and Topi Niamela. And you're getting Adam Larson, who, you look at that and he's probably not going to be in the top four of their defense. You look at Carson Soucy, it doesn't make sense. And the additional detail is, oh, for this trade to go through, Alexander Kerfoot has to sign a future deal with the Seattle Kraken. It started off good, it ended horribly. We have sorry, Willie, but you've been traded. The Leafs are not trading Willie Nylander. Chikrin to Toronto, that is not happening. Off season, we're gonna try off season because there's a few trades in there. And what do we got first? Pierre Engvall, 1.8 million, two years, don't hate that. 2.3 million for three years for Sandine, don't hate that. Zach Aston Reese still is not signed with a team and I was hoping the Leafs would sign him because he's a very good player who would be on the bottom six of their forward group, but it looks like Yarncroc getting him. That's sort of deleted that purpose of trying to get Aston Reese. You have Sam Steele, that's an interesting one. 775K, I wouldn't mind that. Alexander Kerfoot for Cody Glass and a third round pick. Now, this is the problem here. I don't think that you would get an extra add-on for Alexander Kerfoot. He has, I believe, one year remaining on his deal. There's no sense. Maybe Nashville would get fleeced by Kyle Dubas, but a third round pick probably would be good enough. Justin Hall to Montreal, I don't think that happens just for the sake of the Montreal Canadiens or the Montreal Canadiens, and they just traded for a right shot defenseman. They trade away Petrie to get another one, so that trade is pretty much next. To LA, William Villeneuve, and a second round pick in 2024 for Matt Roy, don't hate that. I really don't. Thing is, it's the second round pick. Like, it's 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 a thing that you know you could use at the trade deadline to really bolster your team. What they did last year and getting Mark Giordano, the first round pick. I, I think the Leafs should keep when they get to the trade deadline at this season. Wow, we're thinking very far ahead, but I don't know if this would be a thing that would happen. It would happen in the off season but I don't know if a second round pick is good enough to put in there. To Pittsburgh, Jake Muzzin, to Toronto, Jason Zucker, 2.5 mil retained, and Alex Nylander. That's an interesting one. I wouldn't mind the two Nylanders on the same team. I wouldn't also mind Jason Zucker. He's been a pretty good player. I believe I've just said his name two different ways. Zucker, Zucker, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Zucker or Zu you know what, never mind. You know what, I don't hate this trade. I mean, getting Muzzin's salary off the books would be big. Jason Zucker, Zucker, Z 
He's a good player, and he would be a good player with the Leafs. He would be a great ad. Alexander Nylander, he'd probably be bouncing up and down. He'd probably be a, a good depth option. Maybe on the fourth line, he'd be a pretty good, decent guy. But this would be a good trade just in the sense that you're clearing Jake Muzzin's salary. And although Zucker, Zucker, whatever his name is, is getting two and a half retained, it's still good enough. How much is Zucker making? How much? He is making five and a half million. So that's three and a half million. That's actually, I, I, I like that deal. I wouldn't mind that. Make it happen, Kyle. Did we, have we looked at this one? We have not. Okay, Jake Muzzin, Nick Robertson, Topi Niamela, first round pick in 2023 for Jacob Chikrin. No, we don't do that. One of the reasons why I say we don't do that, yeah, he's gonna be a great defenseman. He's also a left shot defenseman, so. That's one thing. You get the Muzzin contract off the books. That's pretty good. But you give up Robertson, Topi Niamela, and a first round pick. That's two of your top prospects right there. Giving them up for a guy like Chikrin, again, who's a left shot, and they have a number of left shot defensemen already, with Sandin not even in the group because he's not signed. Kerfoot to Nashville for a second round pick. Love that. Then you have Kyle Clifford, Roni Hironen, Pierre Engvall for William Carrier and Keegan Colasar. I, like, it's, I don't think that's a thing. I don't really like that. One of the reasons is Roni Hervonen is also possibly one of the top Leafs prospects. I don't really want to part with him yet. Kyle Clifford signed in Toronto to stay here, um, so he's going to stay here. Pierre Engvall as well, again, the Leafs want him, so they're not trading that. So let's go to outscoring your demons, because this is looks interesting. So, okay, wow, wow. You have Rasmus Sandin, eight years, 4.75 million. That would be a steal for the Leafs, in my opinion. Like, he's gonna become a great defenseman, possibly one day in the NHL. And if you have him locked up for that long, he's gonna get a bigger contract at the end of those eight years. But to have him locked up for that long in the first place would be great. Phil Kessel, two years, 1.75 million. They gotta make that happen. I would love to see Phil Kessel back in a Leafs jersey. That would, that would be hilarious. Part of the fact, because of the nostalgia, part of it because he's still pretty decent, but he wouldn't be the best, I'd say, fit with the Leafs. I mean, you look at the third line, they're gonna be a defensive. This is just so funny, a defensive line. The fourth line could work with him, but then you have Nylander and Marner up front. Bring Kessel home, Kyle, that, that would be brilliant. So you look at Ottawa and Toronto trading, Ottawa getting Jake Muzzin, Toronto getting a 2024 fourth round pick, a 2023 fifth round pick. That, that, that is good for the Leafs. Pierre Dorian's on a hot run right now and he is not going to make that trade 99% of the time. The 1%, there could be that trade that happens, but that would be an interesting one and the Leafs would win that 100%. Then we got Justin Hall to Arizona for a 2023 third round pick. I don't mind that either. The pick's not gonna be any lower than 70. Definitely value to be found there. Yeah, I, I'd say so. Again, you're getting rid of Justin Hall. It's it's an addition to your club, even though, really, you get rid of Justin Hall. Who's gonna be another guy there? All right, so Rasmus Sandin, TJ Brody, Timothy Ligren. It's, it's really difficult right now to think about this because on one hand, Justin Hall, it, it seems destined that he's going to be traded. It's just a matter of if or when. The same goes for Alexander Kerfoot. It, it seems like those two guys are it. But if you trade Justin Hall, you better have something to back that up because in reality, Kyle Dubas has said before that they would rather have Sandin on the left side. So it looks like he would be there. And then if in reality, he comes on the left side, you're missing something on the right side. And if Hole is not there, then you got a really big hole. Hole, get it? Yeah, that's not funny. But seriously, you look at this and it's it's not bad. I just, when I, when I see people saying trade Justin Hall, you have to be having somebody else there because again, Sandine is likely not going to play on the right side. I mean, it's possible, it, it could happen. He's played there and he seems maybe comfortable there, but if the Leafs say he's playing on the left, he's playing on the left. All right, I've got one more in the tank. All right, we're gonna look at Kadri back because this is fun. This is fun right here. Kadri back in the Leafs jersey. 
to go around again and get two cups in two straight seasons. Here we go. Let's look at this. Kadri, so you're getting Andrew Mangiapane for three years, five and a half million. Uh, not bad, maybe. Uh, Actually, no, I don't like that. Pierre Engvall, one year, 1.25 million. Don't hate that. Rasmus Sandin, five years, three million. Again, extend him for however long you want. And if it's an under a number, like three, four, five million dollars, then, then it's it's a pretty good bargain. Nazem Kadri, seven years, six mil. That is 100% not happening that's not happening at all i want this to happen so bad but nazim kadri if he takes anything and i mean anything below nine million dollars at this point i am gonna be shocked like the guy scored a goal to help his team win the stanley cup he's a great center who still provides a lot of value to a team he'd be great in the top six and at six million dollars it, it just does not make sense uh, again it's it's it'd be a great deal for the Leafs it would be great it would be great for him maybe too but he said what he said after he won the Stanley Cup so that pretty much sums up that he's not going to be with the Leafs anytime soon all right so we got William Nylander Andrew Mangiapane don't like that again I see that three years five and a half million dollars I remember the conversation we were having about Zach Hyman possibly making Team Canada and Andrew Mangiapane possibly making Team Canada. I don't know if I like five and a half mil for Andrew. Jake Muzzin for Ryan Reeves. No, I don't like that just because, I mean, at least don't need Ryan Reeves. Alex Kerfoot, 2023, third round pick to New York Islanders. Love that. So we look at the team. I don't mind it. Again, Kadri, not happening. Mangiapane, don't like it. Um, Morgan Riley, TJ Brody, not bad. Giordano, Lilligren, not bad. Sandine Hall, I don't hate it. It's, it's pretty decent. Then you have Ryan Reeves, sitting as a scratch for 1.75 million dollars we don't like that i i really don't and then there's a taxi squad i don't even think there's such thing as a taxi squad anymore so that is exit and we are finished looking at cap friendly armchair gms now just quickly i want to touch on the three players that the leafs signed they signed victor mete they signed jordy ben they also signed cali yarn i love that deal first off it's a great bargain for their dollar and yeah it might be a little longer than people might want but he's going to be a, an effective player alongside david camp on the third line i really like that jordy ben and victor mete they're just depth options at this point mete going down to the minors if it's even possible jordy ben they might have to squeeze him down there as well and in reality they might not be leafs when opening night begins because again you have leafs you have waivers it never really works out, does it? Like literally you had teams saying that they claimed players off waivers just because it was a Leafs player. And I, I don't think there's a reality where maybe you get one through, maybe you get one of, it's either Mete or you get Ben through, you're not getting both. And I would be surprised if they even got one through waivers. But I don't mind the pickups. I don't mind Jordy Ben, especially if the Leafs ever need him in the lineup. He's a big, tough, solid guy he's very rigid and i wouldn't even want to play against him so there's that mete is really the opposite and it's an interesting signing uh, it seems like a lot of people have said it's a project i would agree he seems like more of a project but they're both two signings that really are, are nothing until they are something at this point i really don't know if that makes sense but we're gonna roll with it just because it's true they are nothing right now and unless they clear waivers they're gonna be nothing because they're gonna be gone. Well, let me know what you think. Are these signings good, especially Kyle Yarncroft? Do you think anything in these cat-friendly armchair GMs would ever happen? Let me know in the comment section down below. That is though where we're gonna end off the video. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support in the recent videos. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like. If you really enjoyed it, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Phil Kessel to the Leafs. Phil Kessel to the Leafs. Phil Kessel to the Leafs.